Hello, Michael here with another RenderMan 22 tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at the PXR uh, camera projection plugin for cameras. And um, basically the first thing you want to do is, well, you can use your perspective camera, but in my case, and probably best for your case, because you want the um, aim, is you want to create a new camera and aim. And I'm just going to move those into place. All right, so we've got our camera and we've got a little aim node, which we're gonna use um, for focal distance in a minute. Actually, we'll set up the focal distance now. So we'll jump into the side view for the sake of argument. You can do it from any orthographic view and we're just gonna create a measure tool, distance tool, and just pop down two nodes. They don't have to be anywhere specific. Then we want to select our camera and then select our first node. Make sure under animation, go to constrain, parent, and um, in the options box, make sure that maintain offset is disabled and click add. So that's just going to lock that first node into your camera. Then with the second one, you want to select the uh, camera aim node and then select your located to and go constrain, parent, same thing, add. So now when you move this, if you look at this number, it's going to change. So now we can drive our focal depth with that number. So let's set up our camera. So I'm just going to change it. So our perspective is now through the camera one. And we are going to select the camera one and then in the attribute editor we're going to scroll down until we get to the render man lobe and enable camera projection and then just right click on that and click create pxr camera so then we'll get our pxr camera node and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up that focal depth which is going to be in uh, your focal distance so we'll open up the windows and we'll go to general editor uh, we'll go to the node editor and we want to go to the uh, go to windows general editors connection editors okay so you want to grab the distance dimension uh, in your outliner and open that up select the distance dimension shape and then in the connection editor reload left and select distance then you want to select your camera reload that in the node editor and then you want to select your pxr camera and in the connection editor reload right and in the right side you're going to set focal distance then you can close those two and essentially what that's doing is if i just jump into the side view again and grab that um, distance so we'll set the we'll move that and then you can see the distance is 7.31 so if we go into the camera again under the pixar camera you'll see it's 7.31 so now that is that focal distance is being driven by the um, distance dimension so you can set that focal point anywhere you want and it will be representative of where your camera is focusing which it's just a little bit easier to visualize so we'll just for this tutorial i'm just going to get him to focus on the flower so let's just render that and um, see what it's looking like um, with our pixar camera node selected all right so the thing you'll notice is that if you have a look at the if you have a look at the Maya window, the field of view is quite a bit different and that's because we've got field of view options here. So if I decrease that to something like 30, you'll see that it decreases the field of view. So that's pretty self-explanatory. You can just change the um, values there to change what sort of field of view you want. And sort of get a... Um, some crazy effects there this and that's the thing about the pixar camera it's it is about doing sort of effects um with like lens effects generally 
Um, a lot of the stuff can be done in post and generally that I would recommend that um, just for the sake of ease um, when you're getting down to compositing and when you're getting down to your final renders but there are some things that you might want to do here spe uh, especially if you're just working on stills or if you're just sort of trying to figure out like a bit of look dev um, so for the rest of this we're just going to stick with um, 30 degrees of field of view so field of view end is used sort of uh, when you're doing like a, a fast zoom in um, so if I just increase that you'll sort of see what I'm getting at here that sort of effect um, think like the Millennium Falcon going into um, hyperdrive what do they call in Star Wars I've compl I haven't watched Star Wars in a little while um, you know what I mean though so that's sort of just a basic effect there so your f-stop is the aperture of the lens um, for example 5.6 is a pretty standard aperture that you'd find a lens that would mean that less is going to be in focus so it's going to be a smaller depth of field whereas something like 16 uh, is another standard f-stop and that's going to allow more to be in focus your focal length is the focal length of the lens uh, so you could just set this to 35 like a 35 mil lens um, if you want to see in your viewport what it looks like a little bit more accurately you could go to your camera shape and you could change it to be 35 um, or to whatever you set it to um, tilt angle is the tilt of the um, the lens so imagine your camera still pointing straight at the object um, but the lens itself is tilting toward or, or away so if I run that IPR and I increase the tilt angle the top of the lens is going to start moving closer or the bottom of the lens is going to start moving closer to sort of this part of the robot which is now going to have more focus if you compare it to the previous render and then the top is going to be further away because the top of the lens is pulling away and then obviously inversely the top of his head is going to be more in focus and the bottom is going to be more out of focus um, now if you have the tilt angle on so we'll just get his top of his head in focus again if you use this roll angle it's going to actually rotate the lens so then instead of just the top being in focus it's maybe going to roll left and it's going to be more of this eyebrow or it's going to roll right and there's nothing really there so it's not going to be really focusing on anything anything but you can just sort of rotate this in degrees and you can see how it's starting to shift things in and out of focus now focus one two and three is for defining arbitrary points within your scene to be in focus so you could have three different focal planes set up I can't think of a very good uh, thing to actually do with this and uh, even in the docs it says it can be a little bit iffy so um, I generally wouldn't look at using this there might be a specific use case for it if you can think of one put it in the comments I would actually be interested in hearing it but um, it's because you do I do focal depth in post anyway it's not something I'd actually really look at shift X and Y is just going to shift the lens uh, on the X and Y axes so if I want to shift it to the left I can just put that in the negatives and you can see the lens is now shifted to the left and you're seeing a lot more of the robot um, and then again you can shift it to the right obviously by putting it in the positive di direction and then X uh, Y is positive is going to go up and negative is going to go down just like you'd expect uh, this isn't actually tilting the camera mind you this is actually literally this is like sort of dollying the camera up and down Radial, radial distortion is um, where you get to have a little bit of fun so if you want to sort of have a um, basically a pinched effect so you can see how it's sort of starting to pinch away if I just compare that to the previous so it's staying in focus or it's keeping the focal point um, which is basically the center in this particular example but always the center is going to be more uh, or it's going to be less distorted so um, in the positive it's going to sort of pinch it towards the center in the negative it's going to give you more of a fisheye effect as you can see it squeezes the um, edges around in circular and then um, the radial distortion 2 does sort of the opposite so if I increase that it's going to increase the or oh, sorry uh, radial distortion 2 is just going to multiply that essentially so if I make that more uh, sorry if I put it more into negatives you're going to see more of that fisheye and then if I want to sort of combine that with the fisheye effect it's going to be a little bit sort of wavy as you can see or you can make it super pinched like so um, asymmetrical 
or yeah, asymmetric at distortion x. So in the x plane, it's going to create distortion, and everything vertical is not going to be distorted. So it's sort of hard to see, but if I just compare that, you can see how it's sort of stretching it in the x. And then the same thing for the y. It's just going to uh, distort things on the y plane. As you can see, kind of weird, but kind of cool. Anamorphic squeeze. According to the docs, if you increase, it's going to decrease the effect. Doesn't really do anything on this render, and I'm not 100% certain why that is, but if you compare it that to that, there's no real difference. So um, it might just be the way I've had the, my re test render set up, but essentially it's not doing anything for me. And I'm not saying it doesn't work, just saying it doesn't work for me. Uh, one is the def default though. Chromatic aberration, this is actually pretty fun. So if you watch the most recent Spider-Man movie, the I think it's Into the, Into the Spider-Verse, the um, 2D looking one, the, the most recent one by Sony, um, which is great. Uh, you would have noticed the areas towards the edge of the screens or the areas that are slightly out of focus actually have chromatic aberration. Um, and you can sort of mimic the same effect that they have by applying a little bit of red to the transverse. This is a little bit too much red. It's a very small amount that you need to put in. And then in the axial, just put a little bit of blue in. And essentially what's it's, what it's doing is it's going to add um, more blue to the areas that are out of focus and more red to the areas that are in focus um, and sort of more the out of focus. You can see it almost looks like um, the old 3D red green movie glasses, that effect. So it's, it's pretty cool. You can sort of see it on the edge there. It's a pretty cool little effect. Um, you, you do see it with some of the older cameras as well, um, the like low, uh, low mo cameras when that was a big thing like a few years ago. I don't still know if it is, but um, yeah, um, it can be quite a cool effect. If you compare it to my reference render, it's a fun thing to have a play with. Um, there are chromatic aberration, uh, aberration uh, plugins for Fusion. I don't know if there is one for Nuke. I'm assuming there is, or maybe you can just do it natively. I haven't tried. But um, that's a sort of a cool thing that you can do with the camera anyway. Vignetting is pretty self-explanatory. It's just going to create vignettes. So natural is going to create sort of a, a softer, more natural vignetting effect. It's going to be difficult to see on this render because it's quite dark overall. But if you compare it, it is just creating some vignetting around the edge. Um, optical is vignetting created by the lens. So if it's got like a, imagine if your camera had a lens hood on it, um, it's going to create that sort of effect. So if you compare those, it does quite, make quite a lot of difference. Um, shutter, I never really mess with this, to be honest. Um, it's just the, the direction the, sh the shutter on your camera is going, either if it's down or up. Um, it's probably, it's more of like an effect you would see on, on if you're playing with the shutter speed um, for your renders for an animation. And a still, I'm not really going to be able to show anything there. Um, bias or detail bias. This is if you were setting up a render. Um, I don't have I don't have a mat file that I can do this with, so I'll just sort of explain it. If you had a mat file, like think of it like a mask. And if I just wanted to render out this image, so I'd already rendered it out, but I wanted to re-render the flower, and I didn't have it as like you know um, different render layers, I could use a matte file to mask out the rest of the scene and just render that and then I could sort of composite it in or something. Um, it's sort of a weird way of doing things and generally you just use your render layers. Uh, but if you did have like a deep image EXR, uh, basically it's going to, um, you could set it so it will terminate ray, ray tracing after a certain point. Uh, look into the docs for this one. I'm, it's probably going to be easier just to read the explanation than have me say it to you. Uh, but it's another very specific thing that you probably are going to want to, you know, rather than trying to do it in the camera, I would do it in post. You'd use your render layers and that sort of thing and then composite it after the fact. Um, even if you were just doing 2D images, I would probably just re-render the whole thing. It's probably going to save you the time of actually creating a matte file. 
Um, but that is pretty much the whole shebang. Hopefully you learn something new and hopefully you can do some cool things with your camera now. Um, it's a fun thing to play with. Um, and I, I know I said like a million times you can do a lot of this stuff in post and you can, but this is a pretty good way of doing some look dev on the fly if you haven't quite got to the comp uh, compositing stage yet and you just sort of had some, some ideas of what you want the final to look like, you can sort of play with it here and just get some, you know, test renders done out um, with, you know, with very little effort. Uh, if you liked the tutorial though, make sure you click the like button so other people can find it on YouTube. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed as I do a tutorial every week for all sorts of 3D stuff like Render Man and other renderers and, you know, other and other 3D software. If you want to keep up to date, check out the Facebook page, link in the description. And also if you want to see my work, check out the Instagram link in the description as well. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.